Raider Nation, what is going on? If you're looking for free daily Raiders videos, go ahead, click that big red button that says subscribe. If you're always sitting there, I don't know whether it's at work or maybe you're sitting at home looking for something to do, I got you covered. Heck, if you're even sitting down dropping a number two, why not watch the Raiders report while you're taking care of business? So please go ahead and subscribe. And I hate losing. And I hate losing to the Cowboys. And I got a little bit bet going on right here at Chat Sports where this is a race to 100,000 subs. And the Cowboys report is kicking my butt. Raider fans are 100 times better than Cowboys fans, and that's why I'm a diehard fan. But if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. Click that big red button. Let's beat the Cowboys report. I would definitely appreciate it. Raider Nation, let's get into today's news and rumors. But before I do, today's show presented by Only One Nation. If y'all need some new Raiders gear, all you got to do is go to RaiderOnlyOneNation60.com. Use code Hail Mary, yes, H-A-I-L-M-E-R-R-Y to save 30% off because we're celebrating the Hail Mary that was Henry Ruggs, Derek Carr, 46 yards to beat the Jets. So the very first thing that we're going to talk about is actually going to be the breaking news that just happened. The Raiders, they bring back Daryl Worley. Yes, this is uh, more of a move in terms of depth. If you remember, he played for the Raiders last offseason. He was cut by the Cowboys. Then he was signed to the Buffalo Bills practice squad. The Raiders get him from Buffalo's practice squad. Now the question is, will he be able to play this week? If he passes his, I guess, COVID-19 test, he should be able to go. You obviously have to have like that five-day window, if you will. But this is uh, good and bad news. Personally, I don't really think Daryl Woolley is all that great of a player. He gets burnt a whole bunch. But I'll tell you why this happened coming up here in just a little bit. All right, let's talk about a lot of big-name players, some injuries that we unfortunately have to cover. Josh Jacobs, is he going to be out week 14? Oh, man, I, I got to give this one three chalky heads, and I think that it's pretty likely. When John Gruden spoke on Monday, he just did not sound very confident whatsoever with Jacobs' status. Now, if you remember, he sprained his ankle Week 12 against the Atlanta Falcons, the original report was that the injury didn't seem to be very major. When I saw that last week, I was like, okay, he might actually be able to play week 13. Well, unfortunately, he missed week 13, and all the reports right now are looking like he is unfortunately not going to be able to play this upcoming week against the Indianapolis Colts, which is just like a major, major loss. Do I have confidence in Devontae Booker, Jalen Richard, and some of these other backs? Of course I do. However, I would be lying to you to say that Josh Jacobs, or I'd be lying to you to say that I have enough confidence in Booker and Richard to give you what Josh Jacobs has done. Now, this is what Booker did last week against the Jets, and I do want to give the Jets some credit here, who looked very tough up front. I mean, Quinnen Williams was an absolute monster blowing up the offensive line for this team, and I'm hoping that it's a little bit of a different story. But... Devontae Booker, he played in 33 snaps. Now, most of them did come in the running situations. Jalen Richard, on the other hand, he played mainly in the passing role. Look for the Raiders if they're down or if they're in a two-minute warning to look to Jalen Richard. But again, the snap counts for both these running backs. Devontae Booker, 33 snaps. Jalen Richard, 32 snaps last week. So this show's all about honesty. And I want you to be honest here. How worried are you about Josh Jacobs' angle injury? Scale from 0 to 10. 0 being like, Mitch, I ain't sweating it. Don't even worry about it. 10 being, I'm uh, pulling out my hair. I'm absolutely freaking out. I, I hate to do it, but I, I am I'm at a 10 because this is playoff mode. This is must-win football, and we need one of our best players on the field. I hope he gets back. I hope he's 100% healthy. But, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm very, very worried. Going to probably miss two straight games. More injuries to talk about here. Let's now get into Jonathan Abram. And is he out versus the Indianapolis Colts? Here's your answer. It's three Chucky Heads, man. It's pretty likely, again, for those of you that are just joining us or maybe have never seen Chucky Heads, when I say something's three Chucky Heads, it basically means it's 75% chance of happening. Abram missed week 13 against the Jets with a knee injury. And when John Gruden spoke on Monday and ugh, everything I'm reading today, he didn't look like he was very excited or it didn't seem that he was going to really – be able to play against the Colts. This is a huge, huge loss for the secondary. I know a lot of people ripped on Abram after the Chiefs game, 
And I was like, no, you can't rip on Abram. He is one of our best players. He brings the fire. He brings the passion. He is exactly what, when I think of a Raider defender, that's what I want. But not having him is definitely going to hurt us. I mean, you're going to look at the 63 tackles, two tackles for loss, five pass breakups, two picks. That doesn't tell the whole story. He is one of your quarterbacks on defense. He's also a huge contributor in the running game. I actually think one of the biggest reasons why the Jets ran for basically 6.1 yards per carry this past week is because the Raiders didn't have Jonathan Abram. So now you got to trust Eric Harris and Jeff Heath again up against the Colts team that, guess what, <laughs> they're a lot better than the New York Jets. So out of the two players that I just discussed here, who do you think's the bigger loss? I asked this question last week, and about 80% of the votes came in for Josh Jacobs. I'm curious, after seeing how bad the Raiders' defense was this past week, if the answers change. So, type J for Josh Jacobs, or type A for Jonathan Abram. I see Prod, who's watching this live, type in J. I got Blake Dufresne, type in J. Stephen Gomez, type in J. A lot of people. And then I got my man, Bruh. He's typing A for Jonathan Abram. I'll tell you what, you're going to miss out on this, and you're going to feel like a big loser if you don't take advantage of this deal. Only One Nation drops some brand new hats, and these are high-quality New Era hats, by the way. And if you want, I don't know, a new hat, this T-shirt, a Raiders face mask that, hang on a sec, right here. You want this bad boy? You can get it at OnlyOneNation60.com. Code Hail Mary. The guys that own this company, big-time Raider fans. In fact, that's my dude Rick right there. <laughs> and uh, they were so pumped, just like all of us were after this Hail Mary pass against the Jets, that that's the promo code. Hail Mary. 30% off, OnlyOneNation60.com. I basically just try to always find you guys the best deals. I'm trying to save you money. It's one of the biggest reasons why I keep this show free. So go support them. He's a big supporter of the show. I would definitely, definitely appreciate it. And uh, by the way, this is not me. Not me. All right, let's get to the next story here. Damon Arnett, is he out week 14? This one, it hasn't been confirmed, but I'm going to just read the tea leaves here. It's for Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. He's, this is one of the biggest reasons why the Raiders went out and signed Daryl Worley. Yes, Worley knows the system. He's not the greatest defensive player, but Damon Arnett, after two weeks of getting hit in the head, plus Gruden also spoke how he wasn't really expecting him to be able to play, and here's like a shorter quote. I don't know if it's a true concussion. I think the neck and the shoulder injuries are part of this too. So you're looking at a player who you drafted in the first round, 19 overall, who's dealing with some concussion issues, who's dealing with a head issue, a neck, and a shoulder. I mean, he laid an absolute booming hit on Frank Gore the second play this past week, which also forced Frank Gore out of the game. I love Damon Arnett. I love what he brings to the football field. Very physical player. But when you have a player who you drafted this high and you're already seeing some of these head injuries, the Raiders are going to rest him this week. However, maybe we can get him back for week 15 versus the Chargers. That one's on Thursday night football. So, again, that's going to be a quick turnaround for this team. For me, I still think that you can take care of business against the Chargers even without a dude like Damon Arnett. I just want him for one of the games. Like, either if you can't play for the Colts, I need you for the Dolphins game because the Dolphins game, Saturday night football, is going to be one that the Las Vegas Raiders – absolutely have to get and as I just look down at my phone also a little update Daniel Ross uh, will not be joining the practice squad because the Raiders waived him so that's just something to keep in mind let's go to another player here on the defensive line Carl Nassib was he benched yeah four freaking jockey heads believe it baby I was pretty surprised honestly um Carl Nassib I actually thought had a pretty solid game week 12 but according to John Gruden they're going to start playing guys who show up and practice better. And according to Gruden and according to other Raiders coaches, Carl Nassib had a bad week of practice. He also went on to say some pretty interesting things about, you know, Vic Beasley and Tack McKinley as well. So from top to bottom, this was one of those things where the Raiders decided to play Vic Beasley over Nassib. Now, Beasley played in only, it was like eight snaps this past week. But, I mean, the one thing that John Gruden goes on to say is, you know, we didn't bring Vic Beasley in to keep him on the bench. My question to John Gruden is, does that mean then you paid Carl Nassib $25 million over three years to put him on the bench? Now, I'm not saying that Nassib has been everything that he's cracked up to be in. When the Raiders brought him in from Penn St or when the Raiders brought him in from the Buccaneers, I was hoping for a lot more. And when you look at the production that Nassib's put on the field, yes, it's not worth $25 million over three years. However, 
I actually think that Nassib has been one of the better players at least getting after the quarterback, and he's been better the last few weeks. But if your main reason for sitting Nassib is because you want to get Vic Beasley in the game, I mean, you only played him eight snaps this past week against the New York Jets. I'm hopeful that Beasley can get things going because when he's got his head on straight and when he's motivated, he's a damn good football player. But what is this show all about? It is about the interaction. It is about me knowing how y'all feel. So out of the two players that you see on screen right now, who's the better defensive end? I want you to type CN for Carl Nassib, or I want you to go down to the comments section and type VB. At their best, it's Vic Beasley, and it's not close. But I am still a little bit worried because just a few weeks ago, Beasley was talking about retiring and becoming a pastor. If you don't believe me, look it up. Here's another quote from John Gruden on Monday. Tack McKinley, when he comes back, He's not going to be just sitting out there waiting until next year. That's an important thing to say, until next year. We're going to put him the ball down Wednesday in the morning for practice, and we're going to play the guy that performed the best on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the important thing there is that I see that they're saying, hey, if Tack McKinley's ready to go, they're going to bring him in, and they're going to put him in the football game. Good, because you need help getting after the quarterback. So is Tack playing in 2020? I'm going to give it two chalky heads people are talking. It's a coin flip for me. When Tack and just Beasley as well, when they show that, hey, I'm in shape, I'm ready to go, they're legit. Like, they're elite edge rushers. They really, truly are. It's why both of them were drafted in round one. However, McKinley right now, he is on the short-term IR. He is eligible to return week 15 against the Los Angeles Chargers. So, obviously, he's not going to play this week against the Colts, but... If Gruden plans on putting him in, and if he's ready to go, and that they feel that he's fully ready to play, that's great news. If he doesn't play, then the Raiders have another decision. Do you keep Tack McKinley, or do you cut him and let him go? Because if you cut him, you actually get a conditional fifth-round pick. So we're going to find out Tack McKinley's ultimate value. All right, so I've been getting uh, roasted on Twitter. And you know what, man? I, I love the passion of Raider Nation, and I love the, the players as well, and that's what the show is all about. Am I a clown? This one's two chucky heads and people are talking. I tweeted out uh, something about Derek Carr making a, it's like Mamba mentality with uh, Kobe Bryant. And a lot of players got upset about it. The first guy who started the train was Denzel Good, basically calling me a clown. And it's all good. I get it personally. I think the tweet's been a little bit overblown, but it's now been Mo Hurst, Max Crosby, a few other people. You know, who I who I do respect in the industry, like Kenny King Jr. has called me out. Uh, Raider Cody's called me out. I mean, a lot of these people who I do, I, I respect, I love their work. But I was pretty surprised on how much this has taken off. And I also appreciate everyone that, you know, that does have my back. But here's the thing. I'm glad the players are upset. Because the, my main point of the whole tweet was, the whole Mamba mentality was, I wasn't trying to celebrate a win over an 0-11 team. And I get it. A win is a win. But I don't have just win aspirations. I want to get into the playoffs. I want to win a Super Bowl. And when you see the effort that was on the field against the Jets, you can't be excited about it. Now, maybe I shouldn't have sent out the tweet. That's fine. But I'm also going to stick by my word and say this, that I want to win football games. But I love the fact that the Raiders backed up Derek Carr. And I love how passionate Raider Nation is. That's why I love this show. That's why I'm a Raiders fan. So, again, if you guys have made it this far in the video and you haven't seen the tweet, please go check it out. It's right here at MitchellRens365.